we can now enter identify. And identify is when we use behavioral science to identify barriers that stop your key behavior becoming your ideal behavior. Now, behavioral science, uh, this, this is where you will start to learn theory. But you'll learn it in a way that is uh, relatively easy uh, and, and really structured. And that is around a diagnostic tool um, called REACTS. And REACTS breaks down all the possible key influences into just six. So we'll work through these six. The first being R. R is rules. We follow rules. Uh, we know this. Our parents tell us to do one thing or another and we do it. Uh, we follow the laws of the land. But rules aren't just about the laws and the guidelines that people give us, but they're also about the social rules that we share with others or social norms. You'll know you when, if you've ever come across a social norm when you go abroad on holiday and you sit for ages trying to figure out if you, if you should tip or not because you haven't understood the social rules around you. E is emerging acts, and emerging acts is the environment of change. It's all the cogs that are turning around us in the world, from technology to the environment to uh, commercial products and advertising campaigns. It's all the stuff that exists out in the world that is wanting to influence us. Now, as a behavioral designer, you won't just be looking at, at designing the key individual behavior, but you also need to look at the system in which that behavior is taking place. And this is emerging acts. You need to be aware of what's changing around the individual because if you spend three months on a project and it's launched and a new technology has emerged that stops the behavior you're trying to design for it means that actually the project will struggle and will fail so we need to be aware of them they're called emerging acts the next is the audience the person at the center of the behavior really 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 important for audience we'll be pulling from key and really highly treasured theories in behavioral science. We'll look at the COMBI model by Susan Mitchie. It looks at behavior in terms of capability, opportunity, and motivation. And it's one of the cornerstone theories that all behavioral designers use, particularly in the health space, but more and more frequently in the marketing and tech space. The next is C, communication environment, which is essentially looking at all the things that we're told. All those messages and prompts and triggers that we see out in the world, whether it's the ping of your phone or it's an advertising campaign that you see in the world, or even street signs and wayfinding systems. They're all designed to help guide us and kind of like direct us in what we do. And communication environment is about looking at actually what are those messages and what is it wanting people to do. The next is touch points and the touch points are all the things that we touch. They're the artifacts that we interact with that connect us to our world. And importantly, touch points is a term that's used in design to do basically describe where business meets behavior. So it's looking at what the client has or what the products that people use in the problem are. And the design of a product changes and influences us due to this thing called affordance, where key subtle elements of a design communicate key aspects of what it expects us to do. And we learn from it and we adapt from it. The next is S, social. Now, we are all social beings, we know this. Uh, we love our friends, we love our family, our colleagues are really important to us. But we're not just on our own in the world, and in fact, a lot of our own identity is influenced by the groups that we're a member of. You know, talk to any football supporter. Their entire identity is wrapped around the social group of being a football supporter of Man U or City, for example. Our social identity becomes our individual identity and we have lots of social identities that we basically trade off between ourselves. But our social identity influences and informs what we do. The social norms that I mentioned earlier, that's where, that's where we get them from. And you have to understand that complicated nature of our social environment and our social cues and our social expectations to really understand what people are doing and why. Once we've completed REACTS, you will have a long list of lots of factors that are informing and influencing people. This is great, this is what we want. In fact, there's gonna be too many, right? You'll look at your behavior flow and you'll wonder what you did to it. It'll just be post-its and color pens everywhere. So you have to then prioritize. And the more that you prioritize, the better, because really you only want a couple of key barriers because that's what we'll take into IDA. One, maybe two. So what I want you to do is really look and really think, well, which of these barriers really influence people the most? And which ones can I, as a behavioural designer, actually bring impact to? Now, you might also be looking at your behaviour flow and realising, 
but there's things on here that actually are really important, but actually I can't impact as a behavioural designer. Say for example, uh, a law, law of the land. There's no way you're going to be able to change the law of the land unless that your future project is around um, becoming an MP and putting a legislation forward in Parliament. It's just not going to happen. Now these are really important and these are called fixed factors and you'll have lots of these in a project. And don't hide them because they can still influence people. And if you design all your solution and you make this amazing idea, but the fixed factor is still stopping what you wanted to do, then you'll feel really sad and the project won't work. So I want you to document these fixed factors and I want you to write them as using a fixed factor statement so that you're mindful of them when you take them into the next phase so that you can either ideate around them or you can create solutions that minimize their impact and influence. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Uh, go forward and identify and good luck. I'll see you on the other side.